sing praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God who saved my soul. Praise God, praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise to the King. sanctuary that we gather here today in the month of July. We're in one service at 10 o'clock, and we are so thankful to be able to worship together, um, even though there is no relational split between those of you over here and those of you over here. During our three-minute time, go talk to each other, would you? Uh, you're so far away from each other, but we are so blessed to understand that the words of that, uh, that old song are just as true today that we have incredible blessings from God. And we can get so caught up in the list of to-dos and the list of worries and fears. In fact, we're going to spend some time talking about that today. We get so caught up in that that, that we forget the list of blessings is so long. And the people that God has placed in our life and the ways that he has provided for us, I think if we took time, we could really begin to think about all the ways that he has been faithful again and again and again. And so we come today to worship. I hope you have come with an expectation that he will meet us right here where we are, or right to those of you that are in the sanctuary, or those of you that are watching online. We come together maybe in different places, but we come together all in the same place before his throne of grace today. And so would you just begin to be open that God might want to speak in some way to your heart and life today as we worship him. Let's pray together. Father, we are so thankful for the opportunity we have to come together and to just give thanks. And the beauty that is around us and, and the folks that are around us and your spirit that is present with us. We really do want to hear from you today. We want to let down the walls of sometimes that we put up and the, the guards have put up that, that, that we're just trying to be self-sufficient in all the things we're doing and just recognize we really do need you and life goes better when we invite you into that process. So we invite you to come. Speak to our hearts today as we worship you that the words that we sing on a piece of paper aren't just words, but they become truth. They become declaration. We just pray, come Lord Jesus, come. And we ask it in your name, amen. Would you stand and listen to the word of God as we worship? Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen.
verse 14 through 16, the message. <clears throat> For my part, I'm going to boast about nothing but the cross of our Master, Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, I have been crucified in relation to the world, S set world set free from the stifling atmosphere of pleasing others and fitting into the little patterns that they dictate. Can't you see the central message of all of this? It is not what you and I do. Submit to circumcision, reject circumcision. It is what God is doing. And he's creating something totally new, a free life. All who walk by this standard are the true Israel of God, his chosen people. Peace and mercy on them. I stand amazed. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the think about the blessings that you have outpoured upon us, but we're also reminded of your faithfulness. This morning, Lord, we've, we've sung some old hymns of the church. We've been reminded of generations that have gone before us that could testify that you have been faithful through everything that they have faced. And Lord, it's on that foundation that we come today and that we, we are asked, we ask you, Lord, be faithful to us as you have to your people yesterday. Be faithful to us in the midst of whatever we face today. Be faithful with us in, in the, the list that we're worried about this next week. You, O oh God, are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And even in our own life, for us to be reminded of how you have brought blessing after blessing after blessing, that we can take whatever it is that, is, that we're carrying around today and that we can entrust it to you. God, we also know that there are those in our congregation who are in need today, that there are those that are struggling, those that are walking through physical difficulty. 
those that have been in the hospital, those that have had surgeries. And, and Lord, you bring a number of those folks to mind. And we lift them to you today. Many of them will be watching online because they can't be here today. So Lord, we just ask that you, right where they're at, that your spirit would just fall fresh upon them. And God, I would just also pray for us that we would be a people who seek your kingdom. That's been our theme this year, Lord, that you would come, your will be done on earth in Sandpoint as it is in heaven. And God, we look around and we see a lot of places in which we're not seeing your kingdom. And it can be discouraging and we see disunity and we see the struggle and we, and we see all of those things. God, may we not be discouraged by it, but may we be a people who are called to it to take your kingdom right into the places of discouragement, to take your kingdom into places well, uh, of, of conflict, to be a people who represent you by our words, by our choices. That when we leave here, that the church doesn't just fold up and come back next week, but that your church goes out into workplaces and into neighborhoods and into families and into family gatherings and represents you and the difference that you make in our heart and life. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done through the people who are here in this place and to all the places that you send us. And in a moment, as we open up your word, Lord, we just pray that you would prepare us to leave behind what we need to leave behind in order to become who you call us to be. That your word, that your life, that your spirit would be seen in the lives of those who gather here today. How marvelous, how amazing is your love for us. And we ask it all in your name. And God's people said, amen. Amen. You can be seated unless you're coming up for Children's Corner. If you're fourth grade or under, we would love to have you come up and join Pastor Carly on up here. Make your way. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Good. I'm so excited that you are good. And I'm so excited that you're here today. You guys, there's still room. You can sit on the concrete. Teddy, you can come sit right here on the blanket with your brother. Yeah, good job. Well, is there anything that you guys want to share with us today? Yes, Allie. Two days ago was my birthday. Was your birthday and how old did you turn? Seven. You're seven already? Oh my goodness. Hold on really quick. Did anyone else have a birthday this week? You did not have a birthday this week. Um, okay, Allie, we want to sing happy birthday to you. Can you stand up? Everybody, let's sing happy birthday to Allie. Ready? Happy birthday. excited that we get to sing and celebrate um, milestones in people's lives, like your birthday. So happy birthday. Did you have a fun party? Awesome. Anyone else? Daniel. In two weeks, uh, a kids camp will be coming up in two weeks. And are you going to go to kids camp? Awesome. We've got a big group of kids camp, or kids going to kids camp in two weeks and youth camp too in one week. Um, we're going to Steve's house today. Oh, awesome. That sounds fun. My birthday's coming up. When's your birthday? July 31st. That is coming up. So in a couple weeks, we can sing happy birthday to you. Anyone else have anything that they want to share with us? No? Okay. Oh, yeah? What, what's up? Last week, I got to go on the pirate ship. You did? Down at City Beach? Oh, that's cool. Um... Yesterday, I got, I got to eat dinner with Annabelle. Oh, that sounds like a really fun thing to do. Well, I have a question for you. What is the difference between something you need and something you want? You want it or you need it. Good job, Toby. That is exactly right. So do you want or do you need cookies? Want them, right. Do you want or need to go to school? 
Need, yep. Do you want or need a house or a place to live? Mm hmm Do you want or need, hi. Do you want or do you need um, like a transportation, like a car or some way to get somewhere? Want it or need it? You sort of need some way to get one way to another. How about want or need um, video games? Do you want or need uh, food? Yeah, okay, you guys are really, really good at this. But the problem is that sometimes it can get confusing whether you want something or whether you need something because we feel like, oh, I want that video game because I feel like I need it because it's going to make me happy and I need to feel happy. But that's, you don't need the video game. The video game is not the thing that's going to make you ultimately happy. The Bible says in the presence of God is the fullness of joy, not in the presence of video games, unfortunately, in the, not in the presence of God. So sometimes we want things, but the, we want them because we're looking for something deeper that only God can give us. And today, our message for Children's Corner is that God will always provide for all of our needs. But sometimes we get confused what is a need and what is a want. But we serve a good God who loves us and also wants to bless us uh, with things that we also want. So sometimes we pray for things that we want and God gives us those things too because he is a good father. But sometimes we pray for things that we want and we get angry and say, God, why aren't you giving this to me? Well, he's promised to always give us what we need not always what we want. And sometimes that's tricky. So sometimes we have to ask God, okay, God, is this thing that I want a want or a need? But, but God is so good. And the Bible says that before we even ask, it says before a word is formed on our tongue completely, he knows what we want. So that means when we go to God in prayer for something, he knows that we're going to ask him for that before before we even ask him for it, which means he already has the answer prepared for us also. Let me give you an example. When I was, well actually it still exists, but when I was a kid especially, we had at my house what was called the mommy shoe store. And that's my mommy over there. Hi mommy. And she had a, a closet, like a wardrobe. And in there was anything I ever needed. If I was like, hey mom, I outgrew my shoes, I need new shoes, she would say, well come right up to the mommy shoe store and she would have new shoes for me ready to go. Or a bathing suit, or it could be, it wasn't just shoes, it was anything. I'd say, mom, I just got invited to a birthday party today, I need a gift for my friend, I didn't know I was going to this party. And she's like, well come right up to the mommy shoe store and guess what would be in there? Just random presents and stuff. It was amazing, amazing mommy shoe store. Well, I, <laughs> um, I remember that so well, and, th and that helps me think about prayer too. When I say, "Okay, God, I need this thing. I didn't even know I need it, or I, I wasn't. Um, I need new shoes. Whatever it is, God already knew that I was going to need that thing. He had it ready and waiting for me, just to ask Him for it. Just like my mom, she knew that as a kid I was going to outgrow my shoes, and to me it seemed like magical that she's all of a sudden just had these shoes ready for me to go the moment I asked for them. But she really. She was planning ahead, right? She knew I was going to outgrow those shoes. She knew before I even knew to ask what my needs were going to be, and she fulfilled those. It's the same way with God. He loves us, and he was going to provide for all of our needs, so we never have to worry or be afraid that we're not going to have something that we need because he is a good father. So let's go to him in prayer right now, and I want you guys to be thinking about something that you need or maybe your family needs or someone you know needs. And we're going to pray for all those things, knowing that he already knows we're going to ask him for that. And he already has the answer prepared. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your word and your truth and how you always provide for us. And you tell us we don't have to worry or be afraid of anything because you know our needs before we even ask for them. And God, I just thank you for the provisions that you have in store for these children and for our church. So Lord, whatever it is that is on their hearts or their minds right now, as they're thinking about that need for themselves or their family or friend, I just pray that you will provide for that need. And Lord, um, we just give you all the glory for that provision and the over even abundance 
of blessings that you have in store for them and things that they don't even need but just want. And Lord, we give you the praise for taking such good care of us. And I pray that you'll be with these kids this week and you'll go before them and protect them and keep them safe and that you will provide for all of their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys, for having this Children's Corner time with me. If you are fourth grade and under, it is time for us to go to our Sunday school class. So let's stand up, and we're going to walk that way together. And if there's any more kids that want to join us, now is the time. You're a fifth grader now. All right, but okay. Thank you, everybody. Oh, please stand and greet each other for three minutes. is on the way, keep hoping, keep praying, come on, you say it, keep watching. All right, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a 22 second warning, since you have to travel so far to get back to your seats. I see that my warning really made people move towards their seats at a quick pace. 
All right, if you'd make your way back to your seats, thanks for welcoming each other, and uh, please stay around afterwards and spend some time welcoming. Again, I want to say uh, welcome to those of you that are watching online, and um, there is a number of uh, there's a number of ways we'd love to hear from you, and especially if there's any way that we might be in prayer for you or for your family, we would love to hear at our church office, church at sandpointnaz.org, um, or anybody who's here as well to share a prayer request. We have a team that meets on Wednesday. And they're praying for you and praying for our community. And uh, we just believe that that is part of what it means to be a part of a, of a group of people who walk with each other is we are both in the valleys and on the mountains together. Just a couple of announcements today. Uh, the first is you should have received when you came a, a card that says my fear. And I think I have some people standing by. If you didn't receive one of those, uh, we'd like you to have one because it's going to be part of the end of the service. You could raise your hand, say, I need, I need some fear in my life. Um, I'm not seeing any hands going up needing some fear. Uh, oh, I got some hands over here. I need some my fears over here. Do we, Cindy, do you know who's passing those out? Oh, Vicki has some. Here she... Somebody bring some fear on this side over here, would you? That'd be great. A couple things to just uh, draw your, to keep your hands up. Vicky's coming and she's got it for you. A couple things to just draw your attention to. One is the ladies' uh, annual bake sale at the farmer's market is coming up August 3rd. Oh, there's some fear over here. I see those hands. Fear over here. Lots of fear. Um, somebody, thank you. Keep, keep, seems like an odd thing. Thanks for waving at me. Um, but uh, ladies, there's a sign-up sheet for that. Fear under the tent. We got fear under the tent over here as well. There's a sign-up sheet, and uh, please take a look at that. It's a great way that uh, ladies use those funds to make a difference all through the year. Here's a flyer. You can take a look at it. And next week, I'm excited. We begin our first of three of our barbecues and baptisms that we have in the summer. And uh, we kick that off next week at the Agar's home. Our, all The format is the same all uh, three of our times. We have a meal at 4 o'clock. We provide the hamburgers, the hot dogs, the drinks, and all the fixings, and we invite you to bring side dishes and, uh, and desserts, normally desserts, uh, and then we have a baptism about 515, so a couple of things. One, if you're interested in talking about baptism, either this week or this next Sunday, or we have two other opportunities, we'd love to hear, you, hear from you on that. But I also want to tell you, this is a great opportunity to come and support others. When you come... And first, often you can be reminded of your own baptism, but it's also the way that the church supports somebody who says, yeah, I feel called to do that in my life, and we do that together. So make that a priority. We'd love to have that happen. Next week, 4 o'clock at the Agar's house, if you need directions, we'll have those next week. But once a year, we also do an ice cream event uh, social for the women's ministry. So next week, don't bring desserts. Unless it's rhubarb that you can put ice cream on. You can bring that. That's not a problem at all. Um, in fact, just find me when you bring it, and I'll take care of it for you. But uh, their women's ministry is having an ice cream, and you can, for a donation, be a part of that. We'd love to uh, see you next week as a part of that. Thanks for the ways in which the church is at work, is at work in the lives of people within our community. We've had our, our youth group that's been meeting um, through the summer is being going and being hosted at different homes. Thank you for the ways in which you are hosting. There's lots of ways and lots of groups that are meeting. Thank you for that. You are the church that is making a difference in the lives of people around you. Part of the way that we work together in that is through the receiving of our tithes and offerings, is that all of those funds go to make the difference that, we, um, that we're able to change the discipleship and lives of people. Thank you for the ways you support that. And it's also an act of worship. It's the recognition that God has all that I am and that I want to invest in things that are eternal. So today there's a QR code in your bulletin if you'd like to give that way. There's the offering box that sits over here uh, on the picnic table and then of course online. Thanks for your faithfulness in that. Let's give thanks for the ways in which God has blessed this last week and pray for the week that is to come. Lord, we do give you thanks that you are faithful again and again through the lives of people, through the ministry of our church. Thanks for the ways in which we're caring for one another and standing alongside of each other, loving one another. Thanks for the ways in which we are changing families and hearts and lives, not because of anything we have done, but because so many of our people are willing to let you work through them. 
Thanks for the ways in which the faithfulness through tithes and offerings have made a difference to enable to fund the ministry that we do. And God, we pray for ministry this next week. We pray, we pray especially today as I think of our Celebrate Recovery team that's away for national training. We pray for them. But God, there are ministries all throughout the week that we want to lift up to you today. And we just give thanks. Bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, for the month of November, or November, that's wishful thinking, I guess. Uh, for the month of uh, July, in, uh, as we're out here on the ball field, we're spending some time in the book of Romans. Today, we're going to be in Romans chapter 8, and we're going to look at the first half of Romans chapter 8. Last Sunday, we were in Romans chapter 7, and so if you have your Bibles with you, I'd invite you to turn to that. It'll be on the screen if you're watching uh, inside or on the video. We're going to be in Romans chapter 8, and, uh, and I'd invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word. We're really looking at, at uh, Romans 8, 117. Uh, Romans 8 starts off with that great verse. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. But let's skip up to verse 10 and start our reading there. Verse 10. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh, but to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are his children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we also would share in his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we respond together by saying, thanks be to God. You can be seated. This morning, I want to concentrate specifically on verse 15. Let me read it to you again. Verse 15, the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by that, we know that's the generic also to daughtership. And we cry, Abba, Father. The question we want to deal with this morning is just simply this. What is it? that you're afraid of. What is it that you're afraid of? Uh, our friend Charlie Brown in the comic strip Peanuts um, developed a philosophy. Uh, he said this, I only dread one day at a time. I only dread one day at a time. In, in the play, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, uh, Charlie expla explains why he hates lunchtime. This is what he said. This is why he hates lunchtime. He says, I think lunchtime is about the worst time of day for me always having to sit here alone. Of course, sometimes mornings aren't so pleasant either, waking up and wondering if anyone is really going to miss if I get out of bed. And then there's night, lying there and thinking about all the stupid things I've done during the day and all those in between when I do stupid things. But lunchtime is among the worst times of the day for me. I guess I better see what I got. And he opens up his lunch bag and he pulls out a sandwich and he says, oh, peanut butter. And he starts to eat it and he's chewing along and he says this, some psychiatrists say that people who eat peanut butter sandwiches are lonely. I guess they're right. And if you're really lonely, peanut butter sticks to the roof of your mouth. Poor Charlie Brown, it's awful living with the spirit of fear. Fear of failure, fear of the future, fear of the past catching up to you, fear of rejection, fear of failure. In many ways, we live in an age of fear. We talked about that just a little bit last week. There's the story that I read in the paper about the, the guy who went to the bank, the businessman, and, and made a deposit but forgot his, his briefcase uh, in the bank, went to the office, realized he didn't have it. By the time he had got back to the bank, they had called the police, they had called the bomb squad, and they had destroyed his briefcase. We live in an age of fear. Billions of dollars each year are spent on anti-ulcer medication. One-third of the American population struggles with sleep. We spend billions on sleep aids. Our fear plagues us. Some people live in constant fear that somewhere out there, there is something. They don't know what it is, 
But it's out there somewhere, and it's coming for them, or it's coming for someone that they love. And so they're constantly living a life walking on eggshells. One of my favorite stories I, I've told you before is about the, the man and wife who were asleep at night, and the wife shakes the husband and says, hey, I, I think there's somebody downstairs. And so he sleepily gets out of bed and goes downstairs, and sure enough, there's a burglar there. He's got a gun. He says, help me gather all of your valuables. And so they gather all the valuables together. The burglar is about to leave. He's walking out the door, and the man says, hey, before you go, would you mind coming upstairs and meeting my wife? She has been expecting you every night for the last 30 years. You did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, Paul says. So then, how do you do it? How do you not fear? That's the question this morning, and it's a good question. How do you not worry? How do you not dread? How do you not be afraid? We begin by discovering where fear resides. The word fear comes from the old English word fear meaning sudden danger. And it refers to, uh, to a fright that is justified. It refers to a danger that is concrete and real and, and knowable. And in such cases, fear is appropriate. Fear can save your life. It can, it can rescue you. You can escape harm. And yet that's not usually the fear that we struggle with. We are more apt to be haunted by anxiety and worry and dread. Anxiety comes from the Latin and literally means a tight, feeling in the chest. It is that fear that stays with us even though there is no real, concrete, knowable stimulus. It is the fear of the uncertain. It's the fear of the possible. It's the fear of the what if. Anxiety comes not from without, but from within. As usual, Paul puts his finger right on it. Fear, when it manifests itself is anxiety and worry and dread is a spirit. It is something in us. It's something we carry around with us inside. And we have it long before we encounter anything that's actually worth fearing. It's a condition of the mind. It's a condition of the heart and the soul. And thus the only cure is some kind of reorientation within us. That's why Paul writes, you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. You have received the spirit of sonship. The only cure for anxiety, worry, or dread is a new sense of identity, a sense of knowing who we are. Psychologist Erickson contends that the most basic need of an infant is the need to trust. Can I tell you that I think it's one of the most basic needs for an adult as well? Those of us stricken with the spirit of fear and worry, we need this surgical procedure called a faith lift. We need to know that we can lean back on the everlasting arms. We need to know that we have a divine friend that, that will never leave us nor forsake us. Fulton Sheen wrote years ago, and it's always made sense to me. He says that fear increases in the direct proportion to my doubts of God. Fear increases in direct proportion to my doubts or my, my faith in God. The cure for our fear is a sense of our sonship, of our daughtership, that we are children of the God of the universe. So what does all that mean? That's nice. How do you do it? I want to just give you three things today, three practical steps that I think that could, might help us in conquering fear. First of all is to focus on today, not tomorrow, and not yesterday. Some of us are crippled by the mistakes of our past. We lie awake at night reliving past humiliations, regretting tragedy or missed opportunities or conversations. It is so clear in scripture, the past is gone. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Paul advises in Philippians 3.13, forget the things of the past. We see that over and over and over. It's great advice. Of course, one way of preventing future worries is to seek to be persons of character today. But we can't do anything about yesterday. We can do something about today. Guilt plays a large role in many people's fear. Forget the things of the past. God has forgotten them. Why would we hang on to them? We are also to forget those things that are yet to come. Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, don't be anxious about tomorrow because today has enough trouble of its own. Get an amen to that. Concentrate on today. 
Who knows what tomorrow is going to bring? Today is what you are certain of. Today is the people that are around you. Today are the relationships that you have. I remember the first time that I took my son, Lake, our oldest, down his first black diamond ski run. Now, if you're not a skier, you might need to know that a black diamond is the toughest of the tough. It's the steepest of the runs. And I remember that we headed out there and we got to the edge of what looked like a cliff to go over. And, and, the, and he did not want to go. And the problem is that once you're kind of there, you're kind of committed. I mean, what are you going to do? And he's kind of frozen. And so I, I skied down about 30 yards. And I looked back up to him and said, okay, buddy, all you got to do is make it 30 yards. Just ski to me. That's all I want you to do. Ski to me. And he'd slowly go back and forth on the hill and he'd make it to me. I say, great job. And then I'd ski another 30 yards. And I say, okay, bud, just ski to me. Just ski to me. And we did that again and again and again until we got about three quarters of the way down the hill. And we're about three quarters of the way down. I said, hey, buddy, turn around. Look back up. Look what you just came down. Look what you just did. You can do this. Just do it 30 yards at a time. That's how life best is lived. Focusing on one day, one task at a time. And a loving father who says, hey, just make it to me. Just make it to me. Just make it to me. So many of us are missing the joy of living because mentally we are caught in the past or we are looking to the future. Focus on today. Am I living in the fullness of God today? So first, focus on today, not tomorrow or yesterday. Second, focus on the things you can control, not on the things that you can't. After one pastor had preached a sermon on the Ten Commandments, he had a lady come up to him and say, Pastor, when are you going to preach the sermon on the Eleventh Commandment? He said, what's the Eleventh Commandment? She said, thou shall not sweat the small stuff. I thought that's pretty good. And it's true. There are so many things that we get caught up in. Check yourself on that. How many of those things do we get caught up in? How many of those things that we just burn energy on that really don't matter in the long run? Dr. John Bonnell tells a story when he was riding a taxi in New York during uh, rush hour, and the taxi driver was, was furious at the slow-moving traffic. It was gridlock, and he's cussing this driver, and he's cussing at this driver, and he's trying to get in, and, he's trying to, and he gets the car, and he's slamming the brakes, and he's hitting the gas, and it's going back and forth, and, and uh, he's just seething in anger. And finally, Dr. Bonnell says, uh, driver, uh, I have a really important appointment, and, uh, and I'm going to be 20 minutes late. And the driver said, I know, mister, I know. I'm doing all that I can. I'm going as fast as I can. And he says, no, no, no. He says, he says you don't understand, driver. The reason I mentioned it is, is the fact that really I ought to be the one who is doing all of the worrying in this taxi. You're doing your job well. You're doing your job the best you can. I knew I was going to be late a few minutes ago. I texted them. I let them know I'm going to be late. And so I'm at peace. Maybe you ought to give it a try. And he got him to his place and they, he got out of the cab and the driver said, Mister, you helped me today. I'm going to try to remember that. There are legitimate needs and responsibilities that each of us have. That's not to say we should stop working on things. It's not to say that, all right, I'm just going to leave it. The Lord's going to take care of it. I'm not going to do it. And that's not what I'm saying. We need to concentrate on the responsibilities that we have. But it's difficult to do constructive work and destructive worry at the same time. Still, there are some things that are beyond our control. At such times, we need to relax and say, I've done all I can do. This is beyond my control. And at some point, you arrive at a point of decision. Is there somebody who holds your life in the palm of his hands or not? Is there somebody who holds your life in the palm of his hands or not? And can you really trust him? So second, focus on the things you can control rather than those you can't. Brings us to the third step. We need to focus on our faith and not our fear. One of my all-time favorite books is Corey Ten Boom's The Hiding Place. Corey and her, sis, her, and her sister uh, Betsy were imprisoned, brutally treated in Ravensbrück concentration camp during World War II. They faced unimaginable things that, that no one here will face. But before dying there, the older sister said to Corey, she said this, Corey, if you get out of this place, go and tell the world. Now think about where they are, right? 
Corey, if you get out of this place, go and tell the world, no matter how deep the pit, God is deeper still. Sidney Lanier is a brilliant young poet who lived about 100 years ago, and, and when he was in his 30s, he developed tuberculosis, which he knew was a death sentence for him. He went down to the coast of Glen County, Georgia, and he was sitting there one day, and he was thinking about where he was in life, and he wrote one of his best poems, The Marshes of Glen. And in that poem, he said these immortal words. As the marsh hen secretly builds on the watery sod, behold, I will build my nest on the greatness of God. You did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. You have received the spirit of sonship. We are children of the king. And certainly there are legitimate things in this world to fear. We are living in a season that just seems like a, a season of fear culturally. Right now there is so much fear of the unknown. And you might look at the present situation and you might interpret it one way. And somebody else is going to interpret it in an entirely different way. The truth is we don't know. The truth is we don't know. And when we don't know something, it creates great uneasiness in us. But the answer is not for us to hide in a corner. And the answer is not for us to do as my dad used to say, well, when your number's up, your number's up. God did give us a brain to make wise choices and we need to take precautions and we need to protect the vulnerable. But the answer is to root ourselves in him and to remind ourselves that circumstances don't affect that we are sons and daughters of God. There is no circumstance you face that affects this gift of God's grace upon your life. And because of that, in our actions and in our heart, in our compassion, in our conversations, in our declarations, we need to bear the mark of Christ. Remember verse one? If we are in Christ, there is no condemnation. So the question again is this, what are you afraid of? Forget about tomorrow and yesterday, focus on today. Enjoy it to the fullest. Focus on those things that you can control and, and stop spending energy on the things that you can't. Make wise choices. Do the best you can to entrust and rest in him. Focus on your faith and not your fear. Think about God's goodness and his power rather than the frailties of our own flesh. Don't be enslaved by your fear any longer. Let him break those chains with a new spirit of trust and hope and joy and love. That doesn't mean there aren't legitimate things that need to be worked on in our life. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden those things go away. But today, rejoice in your identity. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You have people in your life. You have relationships in your life. Don't miss those because we get so caught up in what tomorrow will bring. Trust in him. Live into today. Love the folks you're with today. Give thanks today. You are sons and daughters of God. Let me ask the musicians to come back. And as they're coming, I, I told you, you, you got these little fear sheets. And I want you to take that out and look at it. It says, if you're watching online, it says, my fear. And in a moment, as we sing this song, and I don't want you to miss the words of the song. They're, they're powerful words, powerful declaration. But in a moment, I want to give you an opportunity to do something tangible between you and God. In a moment, I'm going to invite you, whether you want, you can write on the back if you want, you can just take it as my fear, how, whatever you want to do. I'm going to invite you to come, and there are these buckets. There's three of them here. If you're in the sanctuary, Pastor Josh has one for you in there. And to take, and to take this fear and to just lay it down. And to say, because here's the deal. When you hold on to this card, every one of you have something that comes after that sentence. Every one of you, when it says, my fear, you have somebody you're worried about. You have some situation that is taking place in your life. You have something that you're anxious about. You have someone that you're anxious about. God's intent for your life 
is to be, as we talked last week, to be the one who bears the yoke with you. That you don't have to carry that by yourself. And so a moment, I'm just going to ask you to come and to take this and say, okay, Lord, that situation, that person, whatever it is, I'm holding too tightly to this. And instead, I want to hold on to you. And maybe as I thought about it, I know what I'm going to say when I put mine in. I am a son of God. Maybe that's what you need to say. I am a daughter of God. And today, just that tangible action of saying, Lord, I need to hold, I'm holding on to this, something of the past, something of the present, something of the future. And I'm holding on to this tighter than I'm holding on to your provision right now. It's invading my thoughts. It's taking too much of my time. It may be even a concern about somebody that you love. And that's, that's great. But entrust them because they too are a child of God. So I'm going to pray and in a moment we're just going to sing. And if that would be helpful to you, I'm going to invite you to just take that fear and take it to the bucket and say, Lord, I'm leaving that here and I'm picking you up. I am a child of God. Father, I am so thankful today that you love us so greatly. You don't want us to be a people who live in fear. You don't want us to be a people. And God, we just confess, we are really good at fearing we are really good at being anxious and we are really good at giving you things and taking them back. And we're really good at saying, oh, I love you, Lord, but what are you doing about this? Oh, God, I, I give you my life, but man, I don't know what we're going to do about this. Lord, you want to walk with us right in the midst of where we are. Let us not hold on to anything else more tightly than we hold on to you. And God, I know there are legitimate struggles and issues and there are things that folks are concerned about. I don't minimize that at all today. You know the hearts. You know the things that are on the, on the hearts of people today. But Lord, what we want to say is we're not going to hold on to it tighter than we hold on to you. We're going to hold on to you today. For you have not given us a spirit of fear. You have given us the power of your Holy Spirit who is enough. Your spirit that brings comfort and hope and direction. There's a lot of unknown about tomorrow. But Father, we want to trust you today. We want to love the people we're with. We want to walk hand in hand together and figure it out. We aren't people of fear. We are people of faith. And we will trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're able to stand, would you stand and sing these words with us? You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance. From my enemies Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again to your family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer I'm no longer
haven't changed, but we have changed because we are holding on to you more tightly than our circumstance. We're going to hold on to you and we're going to claim this promise that you have. We are sons and daughters of the King. We are sons and daughters of the, of the God who has created all things. All things. And so today, Lord, we do pray for the things we struggle with. We pray for those concerns of our heart. We pray for the things that bring those anxiety thoughts into our life. We need your help with them. But we're not going to be a slave to them. We're not going to be a slave to trying to figure out how to dot every I and cross every T for tomorrow. What we are going to do is we're going to hold on to you and we're going to hold on to the people that are around us and we're going to keep taking one step at a time and another step at a time. As you lead, we will hold on to you. We are not people of fear. We are people of faith. And you have been faithful again and again and again. And you will be faithful tomorrow. Take us from this place, Lord. Help us to be your church, your people, your hands. Help us to bring your kingdom into the conversations of our families and workplaces and schools and neighborhoods. It's so easy, Lord, to get caught up in the conversations that aren't kingdom lifting. Help us to be your people, to share light in dark places, to be a people of faith and not a people of fear. Lord, we love you today. Bless these folks. Bless this church. And we ask it all in your name. And God's people said, amen. Amen. God bless you as you go. If you can help to clean up, you're welcome to stay. And isn't God good? Isn't God good? Lord bless you as you leave. I'm no longer a slave. I'm no longer 